Yo, yo, everybody, back at it once again. Favorite entrepreneurs, favorite entrepreneur, your boy, official Tyree Samus. And today, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be going back over, you know, once again, another Forex setup that, as usual, you guys had the ability to take advantage of. Whether or not you did or didn't, that's yet to be said. But what we are going to do is we're going to tell you how you can get involved in the next one. If you guys are interested, stay tuned for the next clip. I'll see you soon. Peace. Yo, 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 everybody back at it once again. Favorite entrepreneurs, favorite entrepreneur, your boy, official Tyree Samus. And what we're going to be going over today is as you guys saw in the thumbnail, we're actually going to be talking about a profitable trade setup that you would have normally had access to, assuming you were in my Telegram. But before we go any further, make sure y'all go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you know how I know that YouTube needs to be able to see you guys hitting the subscribe so that they know that I'm providing value and that you guys enjoy my video. And then right underneath that, you guys are going to see the like button. You're going to see the, um, the thumbs up. And you're also going to find a place that you can leave a comment, okay? Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into it, okay? Now, the trade setup we're actually going to be going over today is um, going to be different than what we normally look at as far as, like, strategies or trades that I um, usually call out, which are more so, you know, like, smart money concepts. This is actually going to be a, um, a strategy called the DeLorean, which is actually the first Forex trading strategy I became self-sufficient in. So what I actually want to be able to reference is, you know, the scanner. OK, so they actually have a scanner that helps you. You don't necessarily need the scanner to take the trades. But, um, you know, everybody knows how scanners work in, a, in the industry. So this is just something that's going to be able to pump out the trades at a higher volume. So the scanner is not just giving you an automatic trade to take. The scanner is giving you scenarios that you can pick and choose and kind of filter through. Now, the reason why I want to take advantage of the scanner is because the scanner is actually going to have a step by step graphic that's going to help me break down why I actually took this trade setup. So for any of you guys that have no idea what the DeLorean is, but you're interested, go ahead and look in the top right hand corner. I actually have a YouTube video going over exactly what the DeLorean is and how to actually go about learning the strategy. Right. So what I want to be able to take advantage of is I'm going to take advantage of the step by step graphic for the four hour through the daily. Why is that? Because we actually took the setup off the six hour. So the six hour would be what between a four hour and the daily. Now, first thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to show you guys um, when this trade I did was actually sent out, which was around January 5th. OK, so I'm going to go over to my personal Telegram chat over on this other screen I'm looking at and I'm actually going to go back and locate it, which was, as I said, January 5th. And let's see. All right, perfect. Found it. All right. So if you guys see right here, this is going to be my personal Telegram chat, which if you don't have access to my personal Telegram chat, um, it'll be a few different places you can find it. First place is literally under every single YouTube video in the description. My Telegram chat will be located there. Also, if you guys tap into my Instagram, which obviously is official Tyree Samuels, click the link in my bio. It'll be included in that as well. OK, so if you guys see right here, this is NZD Chef, which I caught out. Um, it was a shorting opportunity. You guys can see I have a TP1 and TP2. And you guys can see, as usual, it was a pending order. And, you know, obviously I gave you all the parameters so you know how to move forward. So what happened was I went and profit about 15 pips, um, hit TP1 for 25 pips. And um, ultimately, I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, so I ended up maxing out at about, no, that's, that's definitely a different pair. Ended up maxing out at about 40 pips um, or so before it ended up pulling all the way back. So we're about to go ahead and dive into that, right? Now, the thing that I have to actually take advantage of on this specific setup is I have to throw my EMAs on a chart because that is going to be a part of the strategy. So I'm also going to take my replay tool, which, um, as I usually mention, if you guys have absolutely no idea how to use the replay tool, as usual, look in the top right hand corner, you guys are going to see a YouTube video showing you guys how to be able to use the replay tool. OK, so let's go ahead and go over this setup and see why I took it and um, why I got in where I got in and why I targeted why I targeted. OK, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the DeLorean um, scanner and we're going to look at the step by step graphic for the four hour through the daily. As I said, simply because this is on the six hour time frame. So obviously it makes sense to be able to look at, you know, the four hour graphic. OK, so there's going to be a buy signal and a sell signal. Now, obviously, this was a sell. Right. So we're going to look at the example for the sell signal. So we're going to click the magnifying glass It's going to bring us up closer. Now, the first step we're not going to actually have because these steps are technically assuming that you're using a scanner. Um, the scanner is meant to help you learn how to identify it on the regular trading view chart. Um, so obviously I can identify these without having a scanner, but the scanner definitely does 
have more eyes in the market. So I can only look at so many pairs on so many different time frames at one time. So the scanner is basically looking through Forex pairs, uh, indices, commodities from the 15 minute through the daily. So obviously I, it's impossible for me to keep up with that. So that's one of the benefits of it. Now, step number one is be able to help people learn, you know, what direction you're initially looking to take the trade in. Which I say is really just based off of bullish and bearish engulfing candles. Once again, if you guys don't know what an engulfing candle is, look in the top right hand corner. Also have a YouTube video referencing that. So the first one is basically, you know, gonna say, you know, down red arrow for, you know, a bearish candle up blue arrow for a bullish candle. So we can go ahead and skip past step number one. Oh, whoa. We can go ahead and skip past step number one, focus on step number two. Okay. So step number two is basically going to be asking, does the red line cut through both candle bodies? Now, what exactly do they mean by that? Let's, let's actually zoom in real quick. Okay. So what you guys are going to notice on this strategy, you see this red line right here, that is basically saying pretty close to the candle six. They want to know, is this red line cutting through both of the candle bodies? Okay. So know the difference between the wick and the body. They want to know, is the red line cutting between both bodies? Which as I hover like this, you can see the red line is cutting through the green candle and it is also cutting through the red candle. So that would be a yes, right? We want to be able to get a yes on all these questions in order to be able to commit to taking a trade, right? Um, step number three, is there a gray aqua or blue line closely below? Wait, yeah, is there a gray aqua or blue line closely above? I don't know why I said below. Is there a gray aqua or blue line closely above the two candles? Um, so let's go over the three lines, right? So technically there's five, it's gonna be red, yellow, aqua, white, and blue. The white can also be gray. Obviously, if you're using a white background, you'd want it to be gray, not white, obviously. So the three most important ones for you know overall trend and overall structure and support and resistance are gonna be the aqua, the gray, and the blue. So step number three, once again, is asking, do we have a gray aqua or blue line? So they're literally saying any one of the three, it doesn't matter which one. But what I'm here to tell you is, in my personal opinion, it does matter which one, right? So specifically, the line that you want to be the closest is going to be the aqua, not the gray, not the blue, but the aqua. So it's asking, is the aqua closely above? Now, this might be a tricky question for people that are not familiar with the strategy and don't necessarily have experience. Why do I say that? Okay. So reason why I say that is because this, right, this aqua line that you guys see, you know, following price, technically it's not above the candlestick formation, right? Because if this is an engulfing candle, this candle and this candle count, right? So it's asking, is it closely above? Technically, it's not closely above. Technically, it's crossing through. So what I'm here to tell you guys is it can either be closely above or crossing through. Crossing through is honestly just as good as closely above, right? So in this scenario, step number three would check off as well, okay? Now, this is going to be a fairly short video just because this process is not, um, it doesn't involve as much, uh, you know, analyzing the market like the strategy that I normally trade just because, I mean, the majority of this is really just based off of these simple four steps. Now, the final step is going to be make sure the gray, aqua, or blue lines are not closely below price, right? So what do they mean by that? So the same way that you see that these EMAs are above price, anytime the EMAs are above price, that means you're in a downtrend. Anytime the EMAs are below price, you are in an uptrend. So if we're in a downtrend, reason why they're saying make sure you don't have any of the lines closely below, let me explain, right? So if you had any of these lines closely below price, let me actually see if I can find you guys an example. Um, let's see real quick. Let's see if I can find one on the scanner, show you guys real quick. Okay. So like, say for instance, right, this would be an example of a buying DeLorean. Okay. So notice how this aqua line is closely above price right here. Okay. Notice how this aqua line is closely above price. Notice, um, let me backtrack. Wait, what is this? GBP cat. Let me get away from it and go back. So, okay. still there. So what I want you guys to notice is see how you got this blue arrow. This blue arrow is going to signify you want to buy it. But what you don't want, similar to if you are selling it, if you're buying it, you do not want any of these EMAs to be closely above your price. So you see how the wick on this candle is rejecting off of the aqua. That's not what you want. OK, 
reason why you don't want that is because these EMAs actually act as resistance lines, right? If they're above price, it's a resistance line. If they're below price, it's a support line. So if you're trying to buy, the last thing you want to do is buy directly into a resistance because obviously what can happen? The market can reject off of it, go in reverse and hit your stop loss, okay? And I'm here to tell you, that's not what you want. So the reason why they're asking that is essentially they want to be able to ensure that you have enough space to trade in that given direction that you're looking to capitalize on. If you have an EMA closely below it for sale, it could break through, but in trading, we, we go off of percentages and probability. The probability of it breaking that EMA if it's closely below are low. Impossible, no. Extremely low, yes. So we want to put ourselves in the highest percentage trade I did. So basically, since we do not have any of these EMAs closely below price, that means that we are good to take the trade. So if step number four checks off, guess what the next thing we could do? Take the trade. So what I did was I did exactly that, right? I took the trade. And, you know, as far as me looking for targets and why I entered, why I entered, it's a couple of different ways that you guys can enter off of this candle, okay? Technically, two different ways, right? You can either enter um, at the close of the candle. So whenever this candle closes, whenever the next candle starts forming, you can enter there. Now, one thing I will tell you guys is you can enter there, but obviously it's going to be the most aggressive entry. It's also going to give you the biggest stop loss and the lowest risk to reward. So for this um, specific type of trading style, your overall risk to reward, you want it to be at least a one to two, right? One to two risk to reward ratio, basically meaning you can potentially, right, set yourself up to make at least double, right, what you're risking. So if you're risking $10, you can make back 20. If you're risking 100, you can make 200. You're risking 1,000, you can make 2,000, okay? Now, the next entry is um similar. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys based off of, uh, you know, different examples. So as you guys can see where I entered, I entered off the opening of this bearish engulfing candle. Now, what I mean by the opening, okay? So this red candle is bearish, this green candle is bullish, but the overall engulfing candle itself is bearish. Now, the opening of a bullish candle is always going to be at the bottom. The opening of a bearish candle is always going to be at the top. So the opening of this bullish candle is where I put my entry, okay? What you can also do is you guys can wait for what's called a Patrick push, right? Now, obviously, as I said earlier in the video, I did link um, that DeLorean video at the top. Make sure y'all go watch this so I can learn all the information I'm giving to y'all because obviously, um, if you've never seen me teach this strategy before, which I rarely do, you're just going to be confused, okay? So definitely go tap into the YouTube video. But a Patrick push essentially basically means you see this red and yellow EMA, right? This red and yellow EMA that you see somewhere in this area, the second entry is going to give you the best probability, but it won't always happen. Sometimes the market is just going to drop from where the candle closed, and you just got to be okay with missing out, depending on how you want to enter, okay? So the Patrick push would basically mean pulling back somewhere into the red and yellow EMA, right? And then after you get that pullback, that's whenever you'd actually want to get into the trade, you know, to actually take it in whatever given direction that you've decided that you want to be able to see the market go in. Okay. Now, finally, um, how did I look for my targets? That's also pretty simple. So I target for sales. I target previous support levels for buys. I target previous resistance levels. So pretty straightforward. Um, for me using this strategy, I usually like to focus on my TP1 being a risk to award of one to one. Pretty smooth, pretty straightforward, very high probability just for me trading this strategy. So as you guys see, our TP1 was at this green line. This green line is not ironically, right, placed right below um, this wick, which is going to count as a previous support level, okay? And then where did I put my second take profit? Okay, a little bit further below at this other previous support level. So that's pretty straightforward and pretty simple as far as why I took the trade and why I put my targets where I put them. Um, you guys already know from looking at my trading style from other examples that Whenever I'm trading off of engulfing candle, which is my signature entry candle, I'm always going to place my stop loss above the high for a bearish candle. I'm always going to place my stop loss below for a bullish candle. And I'm always going to add at least two pips of spread just to avoid the market kicking me out of the trade too early whenever it didn't actually hit my stop loss. OK, so if I actually let this play out, um, what you guys will see is the market ended up going in my direction. Right. It dropped about, as I said in the chat about 50 plus pips and then it ended up reversing and hitting us out at break even but we did hit take profit one so at that point we would have taken partials adjust the stop loss to break even and we would have been okay with whatever the trade decides to do after that fact because once you get paid you just let the market do what it's going to do okay now with that being said if you guys came to this video you watch the video you support the video 
let me make sure and go ahead and get you guys to hit the subscribe button so that you guys are able to show YouTube you want me to keep dropping content. And right under the subscribe button, you're going to see the like, you're going to see the thumbs up. And with that being said, as usual, you guys already know the model, right? I'm going to see you guys at the top, not from the top, because the bottom's way too crowded. See you when want to be a peace.